regular Board of Education meeting for the Oshkosh Area School District for Wednesday, September 26, 2018. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Would you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Eliasson? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmstead? Here. Special? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Tonight we are privileged to have four students from Oaklawn Elementary School who will lead us in the pledge. They are Maddie Crevillian, Gabriela Pereira da Silva, Kaisten Fighter, and Callie Schleicher. So if you four would come forward, we'll start the pledge. privilege tonight to have some musical entertainment by way of the Oakland students. So and we're the, happy that we have a packed house yeah. for performance. I know everyone <laughs> came to hear this song. Uh, this is the Oakland school song that the students of the fifth grade of the building before we opened the new Oakland Elementary School left as a legacy. So the families and the students helped to write the song with Stuart Scott and Tom Pease and so we're excited to share this performance for you. So that would be about 2013, Seven. maybe? Seven. Yep. Something Seven. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, anytime you're ready. In the heart of our neighborhood, Oakland proudly stands. In the heart of our neighborhood, rooted in this land, growing hands. Our school was built by volunteers in 1952, and on the lawn in front of it, a mighty oak tree grew. A great big storm came through the town with heavy winds and rains. Although our tree fell to the ground, our spirit still remains in the heart of our neighborhood, Oakland proudly stands in the heart of our neighborhood, rooted in this land, growing hand in hand. At our school we're fully free, everyone's alert. We're the Oakland family, so no one should get hurt. We stick together every day so we can work things out. A friendly, caring, loving place, that's what we're all about. In the heart of our neighborhood, Oakland proudly stands. In the heart of our neighborhood, rooted in this land, growing hand in hand. Opportunity for us, a chance to dream and fly. Wonder means we're curious about new things to try. Learning helps us fill our brains with everything we need. Oakland Owls don't give up, we know we will succeed. In the heart of our neighborhood, Oakland proudly stands. In the 
and to Mrs. Herman and Mr. Johanknek for making this possible tonight. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. With that, we, we will go on to uh, board and administrative reports, starting with the board president report. We annually complete a <coughs> survey through the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, of which we are a member. And uh, this is a little bit earlier in the year, but given that we are in transition with the new superintendent and we will be setting goals, it seems like this is an appropriate, is an appropriate time to do this. So you should each have in your folder tonight this form, and you just need to dial in, or not dial in, but to uh, log in to the survey access number. You each have your own individual number, so please do this soon. <laughs> Like by the next board meeting? Can we, can we get this done by the next board meeting? Sure. Well, okay, great. Get, get it done tomorrow. Two weeks. Yes. That would even be better. We should probably give a prize to the first board member who gets theirs turned in. Just let me get my phone on. I'll start it right now. <laughs> Whatever works, Mr. Evans. I like your enthusiasm. Very good. All right, then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you. Good afternoon. And welcome, everybody. Uh, we're very happy to have you here with us. And I'm very pleased to uh, highlight and showcase some of the wonderful things that are happening across our district with our students, with our teachers, and uh, with all the adults that support our teachers as, and our students as well. So I want to start off first with um, Ashley Casey. Congratulations to Oshkosh West senior Ashley Casey. Ashlyn was recently named a semi-finalist in the 2019 National Merit Scholarship Program. This is a very prestigious recognition and it represents less than 1% of high school seniors across the entire United States. Again, congratulations. Over at Shapiro STEM Academy, they're learning all about outdoors. A Girl Scout troop from Shapiro STEM Academy recently helped to bring the school's outdoor learning area back to life. Students, along with adult learners, leaders, excuse me, um, cleaned and painted the outdoor seating area, added a beautiful new little library, and prepared the ground for new landscaping. We want to give a special thank you to these future leaders for giving back and making a difference in their school community. Doesn't start there, over at Merrill Elementary School. Students at Merrill Elementary were recently recognizing for showing the Merrill Way in September. Merrill staff nominate students each month, recognizing them for being safe, kind, responsible, and respectful. Congratulations. Communities One students from Oshkosh North High School are currently working on a project called Oshkosh Then and Now. To kick this project off, the class participated in a scavenger hunt around downtown Oshkosh to gain knowledge about different historic locations. The students will be sharing their learning during a gallery walk style event at the newly renovated Howard on Washington Avenue. The gallery walk will take place on October the 16th at 8.30 a.m. and public is invited to attend. Each group will speak, then and now, on the historic building that they chose to research. A number of classes at Carl Traeger Elementary School recently participated in International Dot Day, which is based off of a book from Peter Reynolds titled The Dot. International Dot Day is a global celebration of creativity, courage, and collaboration. One student activity included connecting with classrooms and other students around the world. Our own students were able to introduce themselves to students in Argentina, China, and California and share how they will leave their mark. Back to Oshkosh West High School. Students in the Empower Academy at Oshkosh West High School began the school year by building cardboard arcade games and hosting a game night. 
Proceeds from the event were donated to the Children's Hospital Fox Valley. Students were able to raise nearly $300 for a wonderful cause. Students and staff at Washington Elementary were recently surprised with brand new recess equipment. The generous gift was donated by the Wyman and the Malhole families in honor and recognition of Mike Malhole. The fifth annual Webster Stanley Middle School golf outing recently took place, and this year the event was able to raise just over $3,000. All of the proceeds will go to support the school's athletics, clubs, and positive behavior celebrations. Thank you to all of those who made this event and fundraiser possible. South Park Middle School. Staff and volunteers at South Park Middle School recently filled the school's walls and hallways with positive messages to students. The school partnered with Image 360 to create and install signs with positive messages and words of encouragement throughout the school. The signs are a constant reminder for students, helping them understand that the South Park community truly cares about them and supports them. Oshkosh North. Congratulations to the most influential teachers as selected by the 2018 Oshkosh North Senior Football Players. These teachers have truly impacted these young men in a positive manner and were recently honored for the wisdom, dedication, and commitment that they have shown to the seniors and to all the students that they taught throughout the years. Congratulations to each of these individuals and thank you to these outstanding teachers. Carl Traeger Middle School. Students at Carl Traeger Middle School recently took part in some friendly competitions and team building activities. The celebrations provided a wonderful opportunity for students and staff to get to know one another during the first few days of schools, forming meaningful relationships. Each year, the Oshkosh Area School District Education Foundation sponsors a complimentary breakfast social for all district retirees. The social provides a great opportunity for our retirees to reconnect with one another and stay connected to the district. It was so wonderful to see and welcome back nearly 100 retirees during this event. Our retirees have made an incredible impact in our schools and continue to do so. We're so grateful for their continued involvement and support. Before the school year started, all of our elementary school teachers spent some time reflecting on why do they teach. Throughout the year, we'll be spotlighting a few of our teachers and sharing their inspirational reflections. Then individuals on the screens remind us of how powerful an impact our teachers are able to have in the lives of every single one of our students and our families. We are so grateful for these individuals and for all of our teachers. And lastly, um, as you all know, the superintendent, I'm committed to being present and engaged in our schools and throughout Oshkosh. On the screen, you'll just see a few examples of where I've been spending my time for the past two weeks. Thank you very much. Dr. Herzog. Thank you very much, Dr. Cartwright. Uh, moving on, we have um, a district administrator supplemental report. I know that was submitted as a written report, but my understanding was that Mrs. Piron wished to say a few words about that. This is the agreement for the WIT Whatever It Takes program and also for Project Search. Mrs. Piron. Thank you, Dr. Herzog, You're Dr. Welcome. Cartwright, and Board of Education. Um, just wanted to highlight that the students that are at the WIT program, we save about $10,000 a year by having them in the district. We also saved the time of transportation when we were transporting to a CESA 6 school. Um, the, the, I shouldn't say gentlemen at that school, all the students at that school are doing quite well. And just let you know that the project search site is at Ascension Mercy Medical Center that is for transition students who are 18 or older. And this is the first year that we allowed tuition agreements. We had 18 applicants from Oshkosh and we only had 10 of our own that met criteria one who declined, so we opened it up to the nearest districts, both Amro and Winnicani, and that has really helped offset the expense, so that wonderful transition program that we have for students with intellectual disabilities is actually costing us less money than it costs to educate at the high school, so we're really happy for the partnership with Goodwill, Department of Vocational Rehabilitation, and the partners there. Goodwill are, is who does the job training there, so any questions? 
thank you for the Very fine fun. work in yeah, serving awesome. the needs of our of all of our students. I appreciate the support of Stan having let me kind of run with both of these and the board um, in the support not only from facilities and finance but really the support for both programs. I'm very grateful. Thank you all. Thank you. We also have a report on the board <coughs> listening session which takes place before the first <coughs> meeting of every month and I believe Dr. Gunlock has that report this evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, yes, the board has a listening session, as all of you know, but uh, just for people who may not be aware, the board at the first meeting of each month from 5 to 6 p.m. has a listening session here at the central office. Um, we talk about a variety of issues, and the reason the listening session was put in place uh, some time ago was because it allowed for a nice two-way discussion on items that aren't always possible in, in, in the regular board meeting. Uh, we had several people there, mainly uh, staff members, both current and retired staff members who were at the listening session. Um, they did a wonderful job. Uh, we had a very civil and respectful conversation. Uh, they had well-stated concerns and they expressed a great deal of empathy for the, for the difficult decisions that you as board members need to make. So that, that, was, that was really nice to see, I have to say. Um, in, in summarizing their, their concerns that were stated, um, they were concerned about the health insurance change, the logistics of the change, plan design questions, and how will information be provided to staff. There were several people who had that sort of summarized concern. Um, another group talked about the difficulty of the change uh, and how personal that was for staff members. Each one has their own personal health need uh, situations and uh, it, just the fact that it's a deeply personal decision for staff members. Um, Probably the most concerns that were repeated were about the narrow plan and can it handle the influx of all the OASD employees? Uh, can the network service all of our staff needs? And the concern over turnover uh, within the healthcare profession in which, for whichever provider is, uh, is selected. So that was, that was expressed numerous times. Um, they did ask if the district would commit to a long-term situation that staff could depend on. In other words, are we going to be changing this every few years or is this more of a longer-term commitment? So that was a concern that was expressed. Um, staff also expressed a concern over lack of options and is there a way for us to provide choices to staff members? Um, there was also a concern expressed by several on the religious nature of some of the providers and would that potentially limit options for staff in terms of their medical needs? Um, there was also a, a concern expressed by several over us losing staff to other districts who might compensate higher. Uh, they expressed the, the, the uh, support for having uh, good benefits as they do here in Oshkosh and they felt if we lost those and we weren't paying higher than everyone else, we might lose staff. Um, the last concern that was brought together was how the savings would be used and what would the board do with any savings that might potentially be used. So that's a summary of the concerns that were expressed by staff members. So, Thank you, Dr. Gunlock. Are there any questions on the report? All right, very good. Thank you. Are there any committee reports this evening? Yeah, I'm the only one. I believe you are, Mr. <laughs> okay. Evans. Um, the Energy Committee met just this past Monday, um, and that's a committee that uh, meets about four times a year, so I get to talk four times. Perfect. Which is, most people think would be a good idea. Um, first thing we talked about was the <coughs> Energy Club updates. Uh, West has an Energy Club that has not met yet this year because it's a brand new school year, but one of their goals is going to be trying to expand uh, Energy Clubs into other schools and talk about how they can get the energy savings message out. Um, we had um, the facilities update, which uh, just talked about what they have done over the summer with uh, when they put in new ventilation fans and stuff, it's also uh, energy saving energy fans, so that falls under the energy committee too, so we got an update on that. Um, when this energy committee started, it started with um, a group of people from every school getting together and talking about how they can save money through less energy consumption. And it was not even a board committee at that time. Um, that came later, but it's been 10 years that it's, it's been doing. And at the time, we had some of our schools would rate an eight 
on the energy scale, which to get rated as energy efficient, it had to be 75. Mm -hmm. So we were way yeah. low. Mm -hmm. It was reported that all but two schools are now at 75 or higher. And the two schools that aren't are at 73 and 72. So a lot of improvement over the last uh, 10 years. Um, we talked about uh, re-educating energy conservation in buildings um, or how to set up your room properly so it's, it's cooling and heating at its most efficient. Um, and as somebody said, the string cheese on a the the thermostat is not the way to keep the, the room warm. <laughs> so that is not the proper way. Um, we're talking about having a personal appliance audit because you know every per little coffee maker or, or little refrigerator or fan that's in the buildings is using energy. Um, so we want to know how many are there and what um, what type they are and if there's some sort of more energy efficient coffee maker on the market or something, maybe changing over to that. Uh, last thing we talk about is e-cycling because um, we have a lot of uh, older electronic items that, that need to be recycled and we're just talking about how to do that in the most efficient way. Our next meeting is in January 28th at 8.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you, Mr. Evans. And I believe we do have another report. Yep. Um, facility and Finance Committee met on September 17th here at the central office. Um, Sue Schnorr reported on the um, final budget variance for 2017. Um, there was an increase in open enrollment revenue, which was offset by the reduction in the revenue by the federal government. Um, there was also a budget surplus in the Medicare funding. Uh, the district had changed to a different third-party provider and has noticed an increase in the Medicaid revenues. Um, Sue also noted that some of the expenditure variance is a budget um, carryover. So Kelly Handy is cal calculating what the total budget carryover will be and that will be reported to the committee in November. Um, then we also had a report from Jim Fox. He reported for the 2018 summer projects that maintenance worked on all summer. Uh, the district is in the second year of the latest Act 32 energy savings product project, which Jim just kind of alluded to some of the stuff that they did. Um, the focus was on Carl Traeger and West High Mechanicals and Windows, Oakwood's Roof, and Webster's AHUs. Um, remaining projects include the West Common Area Glass and Doors, which should be completed by the fall of next year. Um, hardscape projects included the new Oaklawn parking lot with the green space, the Oakwood ADA ramp, the rebuild of Franklin <coughs> Playground, the asphalt there, the Washington parking lot, and the North High East parking lot and light poles. Roofing projects included two roof sections with skylight replacement at the maintenance building and the roof section replacements at Emmeline Cook. Uh, there was a brief discussion on the curb appeal maintenance. Um, I had asked about this, just how the summer went with all what we had done last year, which was a year ago this week. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't have to do it again this year. It would have been nice having this weather now. Last year, yeah. Our denim shirts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a summer helper was hired whose specific function was to take care of the project curb maintenance. Um, Jim had talked about that before curb, um, we brought curb up, that he wanted somebody to go in and start do that, that maintenance work. He managed to get through every site at least once this summer. Plantings still look great with very little was lost over the winter. All replacements were um, sourced through rural nurseries. So with the, our expert people that went to curb and and planted all that stuff. There weren't a lot of experts with green thumbs. We did lose a lot, and um, we did go to Row. Jim did, and he got replacements for all this stuff. They came through again. So thank you to Row again. Um, this was one of the most productive summers the maintenance team has had. And then we also had a follow-up um, on a North project previously introduced by Julie Dumke. Um, she wanted washers and dryers in, in an area for some um, children in need there. And the solution was to utilize the two swim lockers and to keep their washer and dryer in the changing table where they currently are located. All the infra in infrastructure was in place. It was just a matter of rethinking the space. Um, 
and because then we didn't have to redo, you know, we were going to remember we were going to do all yeah. that, like looking at it and redoing it yeah. and gutting that one room. We don't have to anymore. She found some other space awesome. that the school worked with. Um, and then there was a question regarding the status of the Merrill property and how that was going. The house was demolished last fall, which included an asbestos um, abatement. There is no storm sewer on Kentucky Avenue, therefore IRS was con contracted with this summer to begin engineering. The winter will be spent in meetings with the city. They're looking at, because they're gonna redo one of those roads, does anybody remember which road it was? Mm -hmm. On the other side of Merrill, and they're gonna start redoing that road. So they were looking at where the city's gonna put the um, drainage for that road, and if we could link into that one, if not, we'd have to go all the way down to Kentucky, and so they kinda wanna wait till the city decides what they're gonna do. I think it's my understanding. Central. Is it central? central. 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 Okay. So that's it. We adjourn the meeting, and our next meeting is scheduled for November 15th here at 8.30. Thank you, Mrs. Olmsted. Are there any other committee reports? If not, then we will move on to the non-agenda related public forum. There were sign-up sheets out there. I don't know if someone could bring those in while Mr. Peschel is kind enough to do that. I'll share the guidelines for public comment. Any individual who would like to address the board for a non-agenda or agenda-related item may do so by signing up at the door by the boardroom entrance. The board president will call you forward to speak at the appropriate time. Once called, you will need to state clearly your name and address and the topic you wish to address. If you are acting as a spokesperson for a particular group of individuals, please indicate the group you represent. Please understand that in accordance with parliamentary procedure, this is your opportunity to testify before the board. It is not a question and answer session, nor is it an opportunity to engage in debate with the board. Staff are available to meet with you after you speak should you have questions, and board members are always happy to meet with you after the meeting should you wish to discuss your issues of concern with them. Three minutes have been allotted for each speaker. Please limit your comments to the allotted three minutes. Remember that the use of specific names of district personnel may lead to legal liability. In such instances, please pursue the district's formal complaint process by contacting the superintendent's office at 424-0160 to, to direct you to the appropriate administrator. Due to the number of people present and the board wanting to provide opportunities for all points to be heard within a reasonable time period, if there is a group present who will be expressing the same point, we ask that a representative present the information on behalf of the group and that the individual state who they are representing. Also, if you are not present with a group of people and a point has already been made, it is requested that you highlight your point quickly to allow all speakers an opportunity to present within a reasonable time period. So we have one person right now who has signed up for the non-agenda related uh, public forum. If there are others, we will also add them to the list. But the first person on the list is Alicia Herman. So I'd invite you up front, Alicia, and state your name and address, please. And Thank you. Good evening. Share your um, thoughts. My name is Alicia Herman. I live at 501 Congress Avenue, and I am speaking on behalf of the Oshkosh Education Association tonight. Um, I have some notes, so I'm going to look at those. Um, looking forward, um, the Oshkosh Education Association wants to uh, continue our partnership with the uh, Oshkosh Area School Board and focus our energy on the question, and it's a rhetorical question, I'm not asking right now, um, how are we going to maintain and retain quality educators and staff when we um, continue to have cuts in budgets and they tend to be on the backs of our employees? And um, staff morale is shaken right now. They're anxious about the unknown um, <clears throat> retaining quality teachers and staff was a top priority um, reported by um, Oshkosh for Education. Um, the community spoke out and they told us that they wanted us to maintain um, quality educators. And how can we do that um, when current employees only received 1.26% CPI when the state recommendation was 2.13? Um, <clears throat> they're continually sacrificing with budgets. Um, a big concern that came up that uh, creating new positions could possibly be, you know, halted, you know, when we can't um, maintain the positions that we have without making sacrifices. And it raises concerns <clears throat> um, for our, 
our employees where the future holds. And so I urge the board and the Ashkosh Education Association, as well as all of our staff members and employees to work together and, and come up with a solution on how we are going to keep the amazing teachers and staff um, in this situation. Um, we, have, we have some concerns, but I know that we can work together uh, to make a difference. So thank you for listening. Have thank a good you night. Thank you very much, Alicia. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. Is there anyone else who wanted to address the board on a non-agenda related item and perhaps missed the sign-up sheet? Anyone at all? Okay. Then moving on, we have um, three individuals who have signed up for the public, the agenda related public forum. These would be for any item that is currently on tonight's agenda. Starting with James Warren. There he is. Uh, James Warren, 1285 Wheatfield Way. Um, and as co president of the Ashkash Education Association, I will be speaking um, for them, for us. Um, and of course, this is. This is on the issue of our health insurance. Um, Ashkash Education Association, of course, we've seen many important nights, um, <coughs> many important votes with the school board, um, and from referendums to budget cuts, and we feel like tonight is no different. Tonight is a very big night. Um, after meeting with members over the past few weeks, there was one theme that came out of those meetings, that teachers want to keep their doctors. That's the number one theme that came out of all of our meetings. One, after going through the options, we couldn't find any options where that would happen, except we did hear about the option with GHT offering some changes and some cuts. Of course, the OEA doesn't think everything on here is great, but at the same time, we have to go back to our theme for us to be able to keep, for all of us to be able to keep our doctors. And after looking at all the options, the only option for that to happen would be to stay with GHT. We understand the GHT first came out with a 13%, which put us over budget. And these cuts, as far as we were told, would bring it back to 8%, which of course is what the district has budgeted. That is what we were told and that's what we're understanding with this, with this um, proposal here. Um, so again, as you vote on this very important night, please keep in mind that the number one thing that teachers and all employees have been expressing to us is that we want to keep our doctors. Thank you. Grine. Hello. My name is Yukiko Grine and I live at 1804 Menominee Drive and I thank you very much for listening to me speak tonight. Um, I will, I'm a little bit over three minutes but I'm going to go fast. <laughs> um, so in her inaugural convocation uh, address, Dr. Cartwright emphasized that our district puts high on the priority list that not only the health of our students and families and their families but also OASD staff and our families. If this is truly the case, then switching to a provider such as Network or a plan similar doesn't align with this position. It would be devastating to the health and wellness of my family and others. 
Um, I'm going to highlight two main issues at hand for my family, given the prospect of the district still seriously considering network as a possible carrier. Number one, uh, not being able to see doctors and practitioners at Aurora would be the most detrimental for my family. All our doctors are Aurora doctors. Both of our children were born at Aurora. Our daughter has extreme anxiety about going to the doctors, uh, going to the doctor, and it took a long time to find a provider. Uh, who she felt truly comfortable with, that pedi pediatrician is at Aurora. Having to meet with and establish care with all new practitioners in the middle of the school year would be extremely stressful. The person who would be perhaps the most detrimentally affected uh, with only having access to Ascension doctors, however, is our four-year-old son, Hiro Yoshi. He has acute asthma and allergies. There is no allergist on staff in Oshkosh or in Appleton at Ascension. There are ear, nose, and throat doctors who also take and treat patients with allergies, but they are not allergists slash immunologists. There's a huge difference between ENTs who treat patients with allergies and a certified allergist. In addition, the closest person, like I said, would, uh, who treats patients with allergies is, is in Appleton, and having to go there would be an extreme, uh, would be a stress on our family and an inconvenience. You know, my son needs immediate access to an allergist in terms of time and proximity to stay healthy, maintain updated treatment protocols, and get treatment when his symptoms are acute, which last about three months out of the year. Um, access to practitioners like allergists and immunolo um, immunologists should be available to people without having to go outside their network for, or paying extra for a preferred provider option, especially if there's an option to do so here in Oshkosh. Secondly, I am con personally concerned about the implications of not uh, of only giving employees to access to Catholic health care ministries, uh, words quoted in Ascension, Ascension's vision and mission, mission statements. As a person who feels we should be able to receive care that is not driven or influenced by a religious institution, I strongly object to the idea of having to seek treatment and wellness health care at a Catholic or other religiously affiliated health care system when there is another major provider in, in our city. My partner and I are members of the LGBTQ community and needed specific treatment and assistance to have children. At the time I was trying to get pregnant, I sought treatment from a doctor at Affinity who was recommended to me because of his work with women and fertility. Going to an Affinity doctor for me was the last resort to hopefully prevent having to do IVF treatments. I ended up needing a fertility related procedure which was done at Affinity and then had to go uh, pay uh, a private women's health care clinic outside of Affinity and Aurora for further treatment. And this private clinic happened to be started by the affinity doctor I was treated by because he couldn't perform certain procedures at uh, affinity at the time because of uh, their limitations set forth by their affiliation with the Catholic Church. Finally, although Ascension has more inclusive language in their non-discrimination policy than Affinity did, I still object having to seek treatment from only a Catholic health care ministry. While I realize there are many good practitioners at Ascension, there still lies the issue that there are a number of types of care or procedures denied to patients because of the alignment with the Catholic Church. Thank you so much for your consideration and um, for listening to my concerns tonight. Thank you very much. Next, we will hear from Shelley Hernke. Thank you, Dr. Herzog. Absolutely. Are these working? Because I can't hear anything in the back they're of the just, room. They're just strictly for TV. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like straining. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Cartwright yeah. <laughs> and Oshkosh Board of Education, thank you very much for listening. Um, my name is Michelle Hernke and I reside at 6779 South Highway 45 in, uh, in the uh, city of Oshkosh. I'm here to talk about my primary care physician. Um, I went to him recently. I've been seeing him for 15 years for a variety of issues. I also see an allergy specialist at Aurora. Um, I asked him, I told him what the district was going through and I asked him if he would be willing to give me a referral to someone at Ascension Affinity and he said, to be honest, Shelley, their turnover is so great there, I don't know any of these people. I've been seeing this man for 15 years. He's well established in this community. And for him to tell me that this, the turnover rate at, at the healthcare services that we're looking at going to is so great is definitely not something that makes me feel secure. Um, Winniconne, Oshkosh Truck, Winnebago County have all gone to network and they've all come back. So while I believe I, I can understand saving some money, I kind of also think that that's, there's a possibility that that's what's going to happen here. 
Winnebago County only lived, only lived, only lasted 10 months with network. So I feel like the upheaval that we would be having to go to this new healthcare system would probably again be happening um, in another year or two. And I don't think it's fair for you to do that to the great employees of this district. Um, I just think I would like to see you choose fairly so that we don't have to give up our doctors. I know that if I had to give up my primary care physician of 15 years at Aurora and then tried to go back to him in a year, I'm not going to get to see him. He already doesn't accept new patients. And he has no referral at our oncoming, at any of the oncoming health systems. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone who missed the sign-up sheet out there and who would still like to address the board? Is there anyone else who would like to address the board who somehow missed the sign-up sheet? See some gentle nudges and yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> not eye rolling, but yeah. eye, eye contact attempted to be made, <laughs> though not successful in all cases. So I, I just wanted to make sure we didn't overlook somebody who um, really wanted to speak tonight. It is a big night. We all recognize that. All right, then seeing none, we'll move on to the next item of the agenda. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, we will be adjourning to executive session for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session under Wisconsin 19.85 parent 1 parent E, and that would be health insurance bids. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Verzak? Aye. Verzak, aye. Winston? Aye. Elsid, aye. Special? Aye. Special, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Eliza? Aye. Eliza, aye. Motion carried. I know that there had been some questions about a closed session in tonight's meeting, and so I would like to read a statement to you from our legal counsel. Wisconsin Statute 120.112, paren 24, paren A, authorizes the school district, that is the school board, to solicit bids for health insurance benefits. Pursuant thereto, the district initiated a request for proposals for health insurance benefits. The district's request for proposals specifically stated, quote, submission requirements. This is a sealed bid process. The proposal submitted to be considered, excuse me, the proposal submitted will be considered the final offer. However, the district reserves the right to negotiate with the selected finalists, end of quote. With advice of legal counsel, the board will convene now to executive session to discuss the status of negotiations, which were addressed at last week's closed session. Um, so we will be adjourning down the hall. You're all welcome to stay here. There may be some additional chairs in the back of the room. I know it's a long time to stand, so please feel free to use the chairs at the presentation table or any in the back of the room so that you um, are somewhat comfortable. I do not anticipate that this is going to be a long session because the closed session is only to address the opportunity to share with us what was determined through the negotiating process. We will come back into open session. We have this as an agenda item to be voted on. It will very likely be pulled from the consent resolution and there will be discussion of which you can all listen and, and uh, be apprised at that time. All right, with that, uh, we will adjourn to executive session. The Oshkosh Board of Education is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. 
For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. I'd like to reconvene the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education meeting of September 26, 2018. Uh, we have a consent resolution agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. The board will consider approval of one. Minutes of August 22nd, 2018. Oh, wait a second. I have to see if I'm pulling anything. Yeah, thank you. I was, I was on a roll here. Sorry. <laughs> um, to pull anything. I'd like to pull. No All right. We'll also be pulling 5B. Any others? Personalized uh, response. But please be assured that I read every single email that I received responded to every phone call, even though I ended up playing phone tag with uh, one individual. But that was extremely important in terms of knowing uh, what you were thinking, what your experiences were, and going forward what that might mean to you and your families. We do care about you as individuals. We do care about each child in this district. We want all children to be educated well. And all to this board means all. And we depend on you every day. And we know you give your best every day to make sure that every child in this district feels valued and is educated to the, to the best that they can be, at least to provide those opportunities, whether or not they take them in some cases. Um, maybe not what we, we would like. But we do appreciate the efforts that each and every staff member puts forth every day to make a positive dis difference in the lives of our children. So don't ever lose sight of that. We do care about you. We also have to look at the bigger picture. Where do we stand as a district? We've been a low spending district for many, many years. That has had an impact on many things throughout the system. Older buildings, we, we know that the average age of our buildings, as Dr. Mr. Mack used to say, was about 84, which I think is safe to say is older than anyone in this room, um, bar none. Um, we also know that uh, we will be facing some facilities issues. We are facing facilities issues, which will continue into the future, in part because of the age of our buildings. Even our new buildings are roughly 20 to 23 years old. Um, so there are a lot of challenges we face, uh, but never lose sight of the fact that you are valued and you are valuable to this board. Thank you. Does anyone else wish, wish to speak? I just want to give a moment for a pause, if I may. Um, we are working on some technical issues at this point in time for the broadcasting of this. And so I just wanted to at least bring that to attention. I do not believe it's being broadcasted right now. Oh, that's not good. So our mics are not hot. Have to do that whole talk all over again, Barb. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did anybody record that? Uh, so I, my, uh, Dr. Gunlock is, is working on it right this okay. second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Huh. I would say we wait till they come back on okay. to finish. No, we know that our meeting is very public because yeah. all of you are yes. here. Right. Um, I think it's important that we also wait, wait yeah. for that. I got quite a few emails so. that people are going to be at home watching. watching. Mm -hmm. Right. Anybody want to see a picture of my dog? <laughs> 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 on the screen? <laughs> yeah. Anybody want my dog? <laughs> <laughs> Do you still haven't fallen in love with her? Someone just texted me and said it's on, and they're watching it. So. Oh, so we just can't oh, see. Oh, so we just can't see. Okay. okay. Well, All right, let's keep going. Really dumb. Dumb. So, the world, the world <laughs> can see us, but we can't see the world. Oh, they can see you. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. Both. Well, I don't mind not seeing myself, so I'm good. Monitor shut down after a little while, but he's broadcasting. So okay. Oh. All right, so we can keep going. Oh, so we're good. Thank you, Dr. Gunn. Okay, thank you, Dr. There we go. Thank you. Dr. Gunn, it's welcome. And it's not only this evening, but the fact that this is rebroadcast um, is often meaningful to individuals. Dr. Cartwright. I just want to point of clarification just to make sure that everyone was we're up and running okay. so that okay. this is a very transparent process. Very good. Thank you. Um, well, the floor is open for conversation, board members. Um, I guess I'll go next. I, um, I also want to thank everybody that reached out. Um, 
you know, obviously it always helps us to be informed and uh, we can't possibly know what, what is it, 800 and, or 1,300 employees are thinking. So it does help us get a flavor for what everybody's thinking. Um, the thing that struck me, and I think one of the things that we do have control over, is that we're at 123%, our claims are at 123%. So we're a very unattractive body to insure. And that's something that we do have control over. So uh, moving forward, you guys know the game, right? It's pick the insurance company, they'll give you the rates today, and then next year they're probably gonna change them again, and then we'll be off and looking for another one. So what can we do to stem that? Um, I know we have wellness programs, what else? You know, What other innovative and creative things can we do in-house? Um, but I want you to know that I personally have heard you loud and clear that you want your doctors. I understand that. I, too, like my doctors. Um, and so I did hear that. And, and I personally am leaning towards going that way. Um, so I just wanted to share that with everybody. So thanks. Okay, what else? I'll, sure. Um, again, thank you. We. I'm one of those ones that got people at my door. So I've been running into lots of people and calls and emails and, and again, if we didn't, I um, echo Dr. Herzog that if I didn't get back to you, I'm so sorry, it was constant. And um, it, it, it was, I know that few people are talking for many. We, re we recognize that and I appreciate that. Um, for the hundreds of emails that I did get, I could have gotten over a thousand. So I know that you had your leaders and your presidents that spoke for your groups and that they collectively asked your, your you know, collectively told us your concerns. Um, I want to really thank all the personal stories because it, this is, this is an extremely, extremely personal, um, uh, personal situation for everybody and, and this only, this doesn't just affect our, our school district, it just affects the community, it affects the hospitals, it affects employees, it affects everybody, you know, it's not just the school district and I do realize that too. Um, but I also want to talk a little bit more about what, what Allison had shared is that this is, you know, if, if you're out in the pri uh, private sector, the insurances do do this. The, we do need to look at, um, you know, maybe bidding it out more and that we might have to move through this in, an, in, in a fashion that some of the public sectors are not used to. Um, just so that we know and, and kind of are really informed as a school district that that are options and things that we do have to look at in the future. Uh, making a, a huge change like this, um, giving more time and having more conversations in the future would be, um, I think, really healthy for our community and for the school district. I also um, am leaning towards more of, um, feel more um, about giving the employees at this, you know, the option of what they want and, and their own choices for their own um, health insurance right now, knowing the future of this, we can't sustain this forever, you know, that hopefully we can move in a direction and, and help um, with our health care benefits um, and costs. Um, because in real reality, I know, and I'll say it, and I probably will be hurt for it, but I know we always have to save money. We have to find it because we don't know what the budget's coming. We have referendums that are coming to an end. We don't know what's going to happen with, with Madison, with, you know, with um, politics and with who's voted in and what they're going to do. We all know those things. Um, so to save money, our benefits and our salaries are 80% of our budget. So obviously that's where some of our savings have to come from when it's 80% of our budgets. So I just want people to understand that too, that we get it, but when your budget is so heavy on 80% of your budget comes in is one part of it, you really don't have a lot of leeway to take from other areas too. So I hope that came off. If that didn't come off right, please call me. I'll explain it better. <laughs> I hate watching myself on TV, so yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Um, special? Sure. First, I, I, I too want to start off with thanking all of you and all of you that aren't here today for expressing yourselves, either by phone, um, by email. I didn't get anyone that walked up to my door, but uh, I would have welcomed it. So, um, so thank you for that. Um, it shows uh, a true gratitude to the work that you do and to your families uh, that you're willing to speak out for something that you feel is absolutely important to you and and the success of our district so thank you for that um, I think the challenge I think another way of putting 
the kind of the challenge that we have is that we can go ahead and we believe that we can go ahead and do this maybe for one more year but then the challenge is that we're going to be back at this again and so alicia i want to i want to point you out by name um, because in your non-agenda comments you talked about how we have to work together you know and 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 we don't want to do this every year you don't want to do this every year so we need to we need to figure out this process earlier sooner uh, both uh, and to be more productive in communicating that uh, not only to us as a board but to all of you and so that so that kind of pairs down to your families as well so I I think we're I think we're comfortable in, in believing that we can extend this one more year but we're going to be in a really hard spot in another year so so we have to work together earlier and more productively um, and change of message that we have going on uh, being an anxious about the changes and being productive about where we can succeed in creating the best plans as possible for you and your family in the district and continuing the great work that you guys do for our kids simple as that um, and I, I think I think this is not an easy decision for us I think we're in a I think we're in a lucky spot right now to be able to do this um, but um, but know that we appreciate it that we're able to do it for you guys um, and that we look forward to continuing working with you and shifting that message so that the message is a lot different this time to be more positive and more productive in the future that's what we really need is, all right that's good <laughs> so thank you Mr. Evans or Mr. Lyson or Mrs. Carlin, we haven't heard from any of you yet. Just briefly, um, I too thank everybody for emails. I did not respond to them, but I'd be rest assured I read everyone and I didn't respond because I knew other people were. I didn't want you to be inundated with emails from, from everybody. Um, health, our, our health industry in this country and it is messed up right now. Um, and that is going to get worse unless something huge happens at the national level. Um, when I finally got insurance, I was self, I'm self-employed, and I had bought it on my own until it got too expensive, and I dropped it for a long time. And then my wife and I decided to get married, so I got insurance. And I went through all, I went the research to doctors, and I found one that I liked. I saw her once, and she moved to New London. I hope it wasn't because of my <laughs> health. But it's my attitude now is, you know, I envy you people who have these long relationships with your doctors, because I'm going in there thinking they're going to leave at any time. You know, they're yeah. going to get a better offer somewhere else and, and, and gone. Um, so I envy you that have a, a long-standing relationship with your doctor um, but other companies are switching and they're every two to three years they're they're rebidding and re and changing insurance and that's the way the road looks like it's headed if uh, if things don't change so be prepared for for this again <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Evans, and I, I uh, thank all the board members who have commented, but you get to really the heart of the issue, if I can, if I can say. Um, I would also like to thank um, all our staff who emailed. It was so meaningful to read the individual personal accounts of healthcare in the, um, you know, in the, in the room with the doc, right? It was really meaningful. And I will also apologize for not responding, but I'm thankful for your emails. Um, I think of two things in this conversation. Um, the, the wise economist whose name escapes me who said um, that which can't go on forever won't. And American healthcare at 16.9% of GDP when the OECD average is 9.8% will not go on forever, right? So far, I'll let the historians write it, but are we in the beginning of the free fall death spiral of American healthcare? We absolutely may be. I, I'll, I, won't, uh, I won't go there right now. Um, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure we're noticed for that. Yeah. On a happy <laughs> note. Um, so. Uh, I think it's imperative 
that our staff, who, um, when I look around the room and when I read the emails, whenever I go into a building, I think of people that I've thankfully gotten to know over my nine years in the board, and I see friends and colleagues and people I respect and people I love and people I tear up over, right? Lots, right? And I just, I am uh, deeply thankful for you as, as persons, for you as educators. And so, um, um, <laughs> does it skew the decision? How, we're human beings, right? How does that not affect your decision, right? And it's not raw analysis of math. It's much more than that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful that, that our consensus, uh, I shouldn't say our consensus, that our center of effort is on the side of doing what's best for our employees, right? Um, so that's where we are. The, the challenge I have in this decision especially is how does this conversation and our vote and our health care and our premiums and our coverage levels fit in a broader context because I can't see it in isolation or in a silo. How does it compare to other workers in our region or state? How does it compare on the global scale? How does it compare to our students in our classrooms? As I said at one point, likely half of whom can't really go see a dentist in any meaningful way if not for the free clinic, right? And so how do we have these great disparities? Well, we have them because we're in America. <laughs> the disparity is central to our national character, right? Um, so, uh, you, you, you know, as hard as this vote is, or this conversation is, or as um, sort of unsettling as this debate is, I'm thankful I'm not going to be here likely in six years to have this debate because I think it'll be far worse, right? Unless we see a total collapse of the system. Um, so, uh, and, I, and I, it sounds awfully doomsday. I don't mean to, but I, um, what the end point for me is, I would like to right on the heels of this, and I'm very thankful for Dr. Cartwright's um, clear direction to get on strategic planning right away. And I want to be, um, I wouldn't say we're not deliberate, but we find ourselves reacting to 13% rate increases yeah. or negotiations that get us to eight or to something else. And I'd like to be much more upfront on that and saying what matters, what's in the best interest of our students. If it's great healthcare coverage for our, our employees, then I'm for that without question. If it's great salaries to the ability we can, I'm for that. I don't see a scenario where it's both, right? But whatever the mix is, whatever matters to our employees in getting the best teachers we can to best serve our students is absolutely what I support. And I feel like strategic planning and having those conversations about what really matters, what really gets us to the end goal, is what we should do. And I don't. I feel this is more of a reactive. Um, we are where yeah. we are, right? We all come to the board at various points. We come to the district from various other places, and we have what we have, and we work within that as best we can. But I'd like to be deliberate, and I very much look forward to ongoing dialogue with our staff to do the best thing for our staff, for our community, for our students. Thank you for your time. <laughs> well said, Steve. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Kerlin, did you want to add anything? I would also like to thank everybody that reached out and sent emails and shared your very personal stories. I read every single email and I think I replied to every single email and I thank you all for reaching out. It does make a difference. We are in the people business and we heard loud and clear what is important to you. However, I would like to echo the sentiment of my fellow board members, which is this is not a sustainable environment for us and we need to start having conversations on how we are going to um, pay for it next year. So we might be where we are again next year. And um, I think we can do a better job of communicating what's going on and what the plans are offering because I do feel like there was a lot of miscommunication regarding yeah. the network health plan and um, it particularly how it um, applied to the LGB community and, and it's, it's not a, a Catholic plan but that's beside the point um, I do think that we could have done a better job communicating about some of the plans and some of the options because I do think that some of these options that we were offered would end up giving you better coverage for less money and it would have been a cost savings to some of the employees and it would have required 60% of you or 40% of you to maybe switch doctors um, but when we have the conversations going forward, I'd like us all to keep an open mind that perhaps there might be something better out there. And I know we love our doctors, and I know we love the health care that we um, have, and I, we will continue to do that because we value you, and we have heard that that is important to you, and so therefore it's important to us. So when we start talking about this again next year, um, 
I, I think that we need to bring teachers into the process a lot earlier, and I think we need to um, have greater discussions on, on what's important and um, where we can have cost savings opportunities and things like that. So, yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Schnur, do you have anything you'd like to add? You've been involved in this. I'm just here to answer questions. I so want to say time. an enormous thank you to our executive team that, Sue, you've, I've got lots of emails that you are absolutely answered everybody's questions. You met with so many people. So I want to give a huge thank you to you because I, I know it's hard dealing with them, but it's, you guys wouldn't know, but we're hard to deal with sometimes <laughs> a little bit. So Sue's absolutely been great for us too, um, answering all of our questions and the associates that have helped with all of our nitpicking and, and asking and I know I've heard from different employees to staff that have said that you've answered all the questions you met with them you showed them so a huge and you're kind of just the the talk like this is what we've got so I can't I'm so sorry that sometimes you feel like you're in the middle I can imagine that would feel that way but you thank you for communicating and helping us with the decision too and Dr. Cartwright for her sound advice too. Dr. Cartwright thank you did you have anything you wanted to add? No ma'am. Uh, Mr. Eliason brought up a question about comparison with other uh, national, local, state, whatever. Um, I had occasion over the weekend to speak with a representative of a school district to the south of us in Dane County. And uh, I mentioned that he asked me what was going on in Oshkosh and I said, well, we're talking about budget as all districts are and we're talking about health insurance. and he. So well, I shouldn't even tell you what our rate increase is. And I said, no, tell me. And he said, for the coming year, it's a 1% reduction in what they had this current year. We had budgeted an 8% increase. Then he went on to say, for years two, three, and four, they have locked in a 0% increase. When we that would suggest to me we have some room for growth to reduce our costs. That is not to say that people should not be seeing <laughs> doctors who need to see doctors for physical and mental health issues. But if there are some ways we can reduce our costs, maybe greater use of the Three Waves Clinic, or those of us perhaps who could lose a few pounds, <laughs> Okay. And bring our, I'm not speaking of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and better control our cholesterol. Um, that might be a good idea. Um, they always say if you want to lose weight, get a dog and go walking. <laughs> Does that work, Steph? No. Is that in the budget? <laughs> Everybody gets a free puppy dog? No, because then we'll get the vet bills. But I, I, those, those are such serious health problems. Uh, the, the high cholesterol, the high blood pressure, the high. Uh, diabetes uh, issues and speaking from a, a very personal standpoint myself I know what it's like to be a caregiver uh, to a brother and a mother who dealt with heart issues and dealt with diabetes and it's um, it's heartbreaking uh, especially when there are conditions that are hereditary and they don't have total control over those but um, those kinds of chronic illnesses or even short-term ones that uh, are critical in the moment impact that individual but they impact the family and they ultimately impact the community and so working together mm -hmm. to borrow Alicia's uh, term I think is critical um, this is a very difficult it, it's a difficult complex and challenging decision because to me there are so many ripple effects Years ago, there was a woman, um, I think her name was Watley, and she had a training video that John Springers liked to use, and she would drop this pebble into a calm body of water and see the ripple effects. And I see so many ripple effects from a decision like this because the monies that we uh, need to spend on health insurance mean we, we don't have those monies to spend somewhere else don't have unlimited resources so as one of my colleagues said this is not sustainable to be at this 8% or 11 and a half percent rate so working together we need to figure out no matter what um, insurance company we choose we can bring bring down those costs at the same time paying attention to the needs of our 
staff members and their families. So to me, it's, it's, it's interrelated in that if we, if we be in a position of needing to uh, spend more money on health insurance, then we don't have those dollars to put into resources in the classrooms. Um, and so it's, there's some real trade-offs. So I, I do think, just to summarize this, to, um, we need to work together and perhaps we need to look at a one-year proposal with the idea that we would rebid this or ask for RFPs at the, for the 1920 school year. Um, because the, I think the companies acted in good faith and I appreciate their work and the work of our healthcare consultants sitting and standing in the back, but I would really like to see us reduce this 123% claim rate, right. and but more importantly, in some ways, make sure that we have people who are healthy um, yep. in our classrooms, mentally and, and physically. It was about a year ago, I was shopping in one of our um, local stores, and there was a, a music teacher, and her cart was filled with Depends. a great product and I didn't know who she was buying that for. She was buying it for herself because she said she doesn't have time to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That should not be. That is not healthy. I hear from teachers who talk about how they relax over the summer but they're uptight all year long. Mm -hmm. That's not right. I know it's challenging being in the classrooms today. The children of today are not the children of Ten years ago or 20 years ago but um, we need to figure out how to get this under control in this district mm -hmm. so. anyone else I very much appreciate your um, notion to uh, review in a year I know it goes against conventional and best practice that we don't bid every year but this might be an outlier uh, occurrence where um, yeah we talk about a one-year um, provision and I'm not suggesting any company at this point, but we do need to fill in the blank if we're going to vote tonight. And so we would need to, we would need a proposal from someone who would move that in a second, and then we would we would need to, to um, we would have an opportunity to to discuss further and then vote. Okay. I would move to put in our current provider GHT for um, our to carry them through the next year. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we fill in the blank to read, be it resolved, that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the health insurance bid from GHT for 2019. Would that be correct? Yes, it's a calendar year proposal. Okay. As filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. I need a point of clarification, oh, if I may. Yes. Um, only because there are two different options oh. under GHT. Um, there was one with a 13.5% increase, and then there was the one um, for maintaining with our 8% increase, but would result in a change of definition of preventative care. I'll throw this second up. One. I, yeah, I, with the second one, the 8%, we listened to Mr. Warner. Um, Warren. Warren, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's, I think I wrote it down wrong too. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, that the main focus, we have to stay on budget, obviously. So the main focus is that they want their, um, they want their choices. And if that means giving up, uh, which is some of the things that were highlighted on that, um, we have to stay within budget. So I say the eight. So you have to. I think you have to amend your original motion. So I amend my original motion. Mm -hmm. To say that we will go with GHT's second proposal of saving the 18 per, the eight percent. <laughs> can somebody else do this now? <laughs> <laughs> Was the there a title? For yeah, can I read it from there? Do you want me to read it from there? The GHT okay. renewal. I motion that we use Group Health Trust, our current provider, and proposed benefit changes to maintain a budget eight percent increase, and it changes the definition of preventive care, among some other things that were on that list. For the 2000 for the 2019 calendar, 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 calendar year calendar year am I good now no. sorry that's okay mrs um, teresa Collins. mrs teresa <laughs> 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 
Did you get that? I did. Thanks. It's a little late tonight. Okay, we had a, a motion and a second on an amendment um, for the 8% uh, rate increase from DHT. Is there any further discussion on that? Okay, would you please call the roll on the amendment? Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Kylan? Aye. Kylan, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Was that guy the amendment carry? So now we're back to oh, the right, so now we're back to the amendment. Would you please read the original, I mean the amended resolution, so we all know what we're voting well, I'm, on. It's very, it's not exactly what you said. It's okay. to be a result of the Ashton Area School District Board of Education approved the health insurance bid from Group Health Trust, um, the 8% proposal for the 2019 calendar year as filed with the Secretary of the Board of Education. I'm not including the preventative care because there's a lot of other yeah, changes besides right. yeah. that one. It's that one. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you. All right. Would you please call the roll? Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Motion carried. Now it's official. Now it's official. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this evening and sharing and those at home who weren't here but did share or thought about sharing and didn't have time. Um, and I thank all the board members for this um, thoughtful conversation. Um, and I think moving forward we can lay the groundwork then for working together on figuring out how, that, how we can meet that strategic goal of retaining, attracting and retaining quality staff because that really is key to the moving the district forward. <coughs> Are there any individually considered resolutions? Is there a request for any future agenda item? I think everybody's pretty spent tonight. <laughs> Are, there, Are there any announcements? Well, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Aye. 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 Aye.